I'm going to use a scripture that you might think is a little odd for a new year, the first Sunday of a new year, but it's Paul speaking to the Galatian Christians in the fifth chapter and the seventh verse. He said, you were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? Who has held you back from following the truth? Now, you have to understand the full setting of that message to the Galatians. He was talking about those who had fallen away, those who had caused others to fall away, and the necessity of continuing the course. And this being the first Sunday of 2016, we begin a new year with many of us trying to make a new start in different ways. Some from uh, wasteliness in our finances, some in bad decisions that we've made. How do we spend our time? How do we go about our regular work week and get through it all and keep our sanity? And we look at all of these different things and we're right at the beginning of the year and it feels right for us to make some changes. And so I, with that scripture as a backdrop, you were running the race so well, who then held you back from following the truth? I ask the question today, who would like to have a fresh start. That's what this is. A new year is a fresh start. Now, the book of Genesis, for instance, is the book of beginnings. And everything we know about mankind began in the book of Genesis. The beginning of man, the beginning of time, the beginning of organic growth. We get to chapter 2 and we see the beginning of woman. Chapter 4, the beginning of worship. And also I'll add the beginning of death. And then as we go on through the book, we see nations. We see governments. We see kingdoms. And then a new beginning after the flood, a fresh start. And this book you also find in Genesis, the beginning of slavery, the beginning of jealousy, and the beginning of idol worship, and so much more. There was so much good that we see beginning in Genesis, the book of beginnings, but we also see the beginning of some bad that came along as well. Anybody in here ever have a product, car, or an appliance or something that there was a manufacturer's recall on it? Let me see your hand. Yeah, a lot of folks have had recalls. I was talking with a friend of mine. And he was telling me about a watch, a Seiko watch that his wife gave to him not long after they married. And he loved that watch. It was perfect, he said. But it, in time, it reached the point that he wouldn't work anymore. And he kept wearing it even though it didn't work. Finally, he was talking to one of our missionary superintendents. And he said to him, Seiko's factory is in Hong Kong. And you're about to leave to go to Hong Kong and do ministry. Trust me. Take that watch to that Seiko factory. And I promise you, in four to six weeks, they will send it back to you. So he did just that. He took it to the factory and left it with them. That precious watch that was treasured because his wife gave it to him very soon after their wedding, 47 years ago now. And in four to six weeks, he said, he received that watch back in the mail. The manufacturer took that watch completely apart Every fine working piece in that watch was taken out. 
and cleaned and redone and made to work properly. Put a new crystal on the face and polished it up and sent it back to him. He said it looked better than the day he received it. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ does exactly that to every individual that will call on his name. He takes us completely apart. He cleans us. He cleanses us. He makes us new. It's like David said, create in me, O oh God, a right spirit. Create with me, O within me, O God. Wash me with hyssop and make me clean. That's what David said. That's exactly what the Lord does. Well, what about humanity? What about humankind? There's a recall notice with instructions on humanity. And it would go sort of like this. The maker of all human beings is calling all units manufactured, regardless of make or year, due to a serious defect in the primary and central component of the heart. This is due to a malfunction in the original prototype units codenamed Adam and Eve, resulting in the reproduction of the same defect in all subsequent units. This defect has been technically termed subsequential internal non-morality, more commonly known as S-I-N, sin, as it's primarily expressed. There are other symptoms of this defect, loss of direction, foul vocal emissions, amnesia of origin, lack of peace and joy, selfish, sometimes violent behavior, fearfulness, idolatry, rebellion. All symptoms of this sin defect. The manufacturer, who is neither liable nor at fault for this defect, is providing factory authorized repair and service free of charge to correct this SIN defect. The repair technician, Jesus, most generously offered to bear the entire burden of the staggering cost of these repairs. There's no additional fee required. And then the instructions come with that recall. The number to call for, for, for repair in all areas is P-R-A-Y-E-R-1. -E Once connected, upload your burden of sin, S-I-N, through the repentance process. Then next, download atonement from the repair technician, Jesus, into the heart component of this human unit. No matter how big or small the sin defect is, Jesus will replace it with love, joy, peace, ha happiness, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. But then refer to the operating manual. The B-I-B-L-E. Believer's instructions before leaving earth. For further details on the use of these fixes. But with that call and with the instruction, there's a warning. Continuing to operate the human being unit without correction voids any manufacturer or warranty exposing the unit to dangers and problems too numerous to list and will result in the human unit being permanently impounded. For free emergency call service, call on Jesus. There's a danger. The human beings, human being units not responding to this recall action will have to be scrapped in the furnace. The SIN defect 
will not be permitted to enter heaven so as to prevent contamination of that facility. I think you got the point. <laughs> Through Jesus Christ giving his life for us, we have a fresh start. But there are biblical examples of fresh starts. Look at the maimed man that was trying to get into the pool wherein he would have cleansing. Jesus walked by, looked at him and said, Sir, would you like to be healed? He said, Yes, Master, I want to be healed. But, or he said, Yes, I want to be healed, but there's no one to help me get into the water. Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, healed him immediately and said, Take up your bed and walk. And then Jesus got lost in the crowd. Man didn't know who it was. And then Jesus found him again. John 5, 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well, so stop sinning or something even worse will happen to you. At the pool, Jesus reached out to him. Now he reaches out to him in another way and for another purpose. When he found the man, he was in the temple thanking God, praising God, worshiping God for his healing. But there also is found in that scene a painted picture of every believer's responsibility to God. It is the duty of every Christian to sin no more. Apparently this man had been injured some way in an accident caused by sin and Jesus said to the man, sin no more. And I have this thought. How many people are physically, are diseased, crippled, maimed because of sin such as drunkenness, immorality, addictions, driving over the speed limit, how many people are in the bondage of those kinds of things because of the sin element? And Jesus said to the man, stop sinning or a worse thing can come upon you. This was the maimed man's fresh start. And then there was the adulterous woman who was brought to Jesus. And when they brought her to him, they said, this woman's supposed to be stoned. She should be stoned and killed for her actions and activities. You know the story. Jesus reached down, wrote in the sand. And when he raised up, there was no one there but the woman. And he asked her, where are your accusers? She said, there are none, Master. They're not here. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Paul admonished the young preacher Timothy. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Y'all listen to that. The solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ Depart from iniquity. Get out of the sinning business. Stop transgressing. Some may turn away from Christ. Others may be overthrown or, or undermined by selfish people or talk or godless teachings. They may be overthrown by those things. Nevertheless, the foundation of God is sure. It's not going to be broken. Now, what is meant by the foundation of God? It means the household of God, the family of faith, the believers, the great house of believers that God is building today. It's important, in my opinion, for us to notice two facts about the great house of believers. The great house of believers has two inscriptions written upon it that guarantee our security. The first inscription is, the Lord knows those who are His. 
There are no false professions in the belief in, 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 in the Lord's house. There are no hypocrites in the Lord's house. In God's household, they're just not there. Not in his real household. There's no one that there's no one that's gonna fool God. You don't pull the wool over God's eyes. You can hide things from everybody else. But you don't hide things from God. He sees all, knows all, understands all. And he has all power to deal with it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody fools God. Within this earthly church, within this earthly church, there are both wheat and tares. There are those who believe and there are those who do not believe. There are those that claim it and don't live it. And there are those who claim it and everybody knows they live it. You see, God looks upon us. He knows those that are truly His. He knows how to separate. He knows those who have really and truly entered into His household and those who are only saying it and not really meaning it. The point's this. If a person is living within the household of God, remaining steadfast and is loyal, he is a true believer. He is a true member of God's household. And he's secure within God's house. Can I buy an amen here? The second inscription is this. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity or unrighteousness. The sign that a person is of the household of God is a pure and righteous life. A pure and righteous life. Our sinful behavior, did you hear me? Our sinful behavior proves that we are not of God's household. We have to cleanse ourselves and not cleanse ourselves, but rid ourselves of all uncleanliness. Thus, we come to today's text. You're we're running the race well. So what has held you back? Who has held you back from following the truth? 2016 is a fresh start. 2016 is a new year. 2016 is going to be major in our lives at this moment. None of us know what lies ahead to December 31. None of us know that the prognosticators are saying there's going to be a terrible economic collapse. There are others that are saying that politically it's going to be a downhill run and the whole world's going to be messed up. Well, my answer to that is the whole world's messed up anyway. The whole world is affected by that S-I-N defect and needs Christ. So the prognosticators are saying all that they're saying. We don't know what's going to happen this next year, but I can tell you what's going to happen around Connection Point Church. You ready for this? Tighten your seatbelts. Prayer is going to be a major focus in this church. We will resume, we will resume the pastor's prayer breakfast and meeting with the elders on Saturday mornings once a month. And it's going to start this month on the 23rd of January. The rest of the year it'll be the first Saturday of each month. But it's going to start the 23rd because we begin revival on the 24th. We're going to be restructuring some things around the church. We're going to be restructuring some administrative duties. We're going to be restructuring some other areas of ministry. But we're also going to be appointing the new ministry elders for this two-year term. And we will be meeting with them once a month. Also, we're going to continue the quarterly prayer Community prayer emphasis. Amen.
and we're going to keep oil in the church. Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil. Lay hands on them in the name of Jesus and the sick shall be made whole. Hallelujah. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man will accomplish much. We're going to see that come to pass. Now, Pastor Grant mentioned the training next Tuesday night for the altar workers in the Reinhardt Bunky Crusade. We're not doing the training. We are not the ones doing the training. We are the host building wherein the training will take place, which means all of us can be trained to do altar work. How to not, how to not under press, and certainly how to not over press in praying with someone. Beating them on the back saying, you're going to hell if you don't get right. That's not the way you pray for somebody in the altar. Nor is praying with them by saying, you've got just a little malfunction. It's going to be all right. No, we're not going to sugarcoat sin. We're going to proclaim truth. We're going to declare the day of the Lord. We're going to declare righteousness and holiness before God Almighty. Hallelujah. Soul winning and discipleship is going to be another major point of focus. Beginning with evangelism breakthrough with Leonard Albert on April 1, 2, and 3. The first is a Friday night. The second is a Saturday. The third is a Sunday. Leonard Al Albert. How many of you have ever heard of Leonard Albert? All right. Leonard Albert, for those of you who do not know, is the hallmark trainer of discipleship, witnessing, and soul winning in the church of God. And he's going to be with us. How many of you have heard me make the statement, the epistles are not wives of the apostles? You heard me make that statement? That's a Leonard Albert saying that I picked up 40 years ago. He's going to be with us. Brother Roy Jones has trained under Leonard Albert, and he's going to be leading us in soul winning and discipleship after this evangelism breakthrough, April 1st through the 3rd. There are going to be regular opportunities for witnessing and one-on-one -on -one discipleship and mentoring, and it's going to be for both men and women to be mentored. One day you may stand in the service singing and say, where did the years of my life go? And then suddenly have reality hit and say, but I have children in Christ that are carrying the torch. Can you say amen? We're going to strive for expanded training and ministry for middle schoolers. We're going to make a concerted and focused effort on the enlistment. That's, this is why I told you to fasten your seatbelt. I don't want anybody getting out of here. We're going to make a concerted and focused effort on the enlistment of teachers and workers to invest in souls in these classrooms and in this church. And we're going to have a continued the continued focus on discipleship and benevolence to our community. Did you hear what I said? Continued in our community. Now, I thank God for everything we do in 69 or 80 locations around the country, three countries outside the United States. I thank God for all that we do in that regard. But we live in this community. We live here where people are dying and going to hell in a handbasket. Some of you shut me down when I use the word hell. But that's exactly what's happening. 
We have people all around us every day that are dying without Christ. And we know what happens. That human unit is scrapped in the furnace. Uh. We're also going to focus on the safety of our people. Our facilities, we're going to see repairs and updates that are needed for safety and that will also enhance worship. This building needs attention. We've repaired and replaced, rather, so many of these heat and air units, but that's not the only thing bad. We got more. And we're also going to focus on the safety of supervision throughout the church and throughout the school. Safety is going to be emphasized. Your protection is necessary. And we're going to see that it's done. I don't want anybody else tripping and falling over that piece of carpet over there that's come unglued and raveled away. Somebody say amen. If you've tripped on that thing, surely you can shout hallelujah. Well, maybe me and that one I saw the other day are the only ones that fell. In this new year, I purpose in my heart for me and I purpose in my heart for this church that we will not be hindered. We refuse to be hindered. We refuse to be hindered by complainers. Refuse to be hindered by critics. Refuse to be hindered by the unbelievers. Fault finders. Somebody say amen. We are not going to be hindered by those who just are lackadaisical and don't really care about doing a work for God. They can live their life and we'll pray for them. But we're going to go forward for the glory of God. <clears throat> Amen. We have to do that as we discern the times. In fact, the day is far spent. John, the fourth chapter of the... 35th through the 36th verses. And there, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, awake and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages. And the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike we have a purpose we have a command we have a mandate and that's to work and labor for God our lives must be focused on the will and the work of Almighty God do you understand me we have to be focused on his will and his work everything else Everything else is secondary. It's God first. We can go through all these motions of, of baseball training and soccer training and games on Sunday and traveling teams. We can put all kinds of emphasis on that. But the real emphasis is on serving God and doing His will. Not running all over the country pacifying spoiled kids. Did I really say that? The truth comes out. We are to labor for God. Our lives have to be focused on that one fact. The truth is our very purpose of even being on this planet the very focus purpose of us even being on this planet is to serve God, obey Him, and work for Him. We must labor for the harvest is ripe. The task is urgent. 
We have to work for Him for the rewards come with great benefits. We have to work for Him because results are going to follow. And I'm convinced we're going to see great results this year. I'm asking God for big numbers of people to come to know Christ this year. Some folks are going to need a stark awakening to make them turn to God. Some people have already been to the very bottom and it hasn't turned them around because they've refused to turn. But there's going to be something that will happen to cause sinful men and women to take an inward look and say, fix me, God. I'm a sinner. We all need, we all could use a fresh start. Most everybody in this room, if I know you the way I think I know you, most everyone in this room does your very best to please God, to serve Him, and to follow His will. But even at that, we need a fresh start. The pastoral staff, church support staff, those working in the school, the department leaders, teachers, we all do the best we can do to be what we need to be. But I say for myself and for all of the rest of us on that staff inclusion, we need a fresh start. We need a fresh start, a renewed vision, a renewed focus. And with that, God is going to give the increase. Stand with me, please. Now is the time for it. Now is the time for a fresh start. Now is the important moment. Jesus said in John 9 and 4, He said, We must quickly carry out the task assigned to us by the one who sent us. For the night is coming, and then no one can work. The King James you may more readily know and recognize. Work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. Can I tell you from an old song, but from seeing the signs and discerning the times, understanding that the day is far spent. Life's evening sun is sinking low. I am convinced that this world will not stand as it is for very much longer. I am convinced Things are in alignment already, preparing the return of Christ. In just a while, God is going to say, enough is enough. And He is going to give the command to Jesus, go and get my people and redeem them unto me. Hallelujah. I believe that with such conviction as I said it, cold chills ran all over my face. I believe we're that close to the coming of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you, God, for your love, your grace, your tender mercy. I thank you for your care for your own. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to every heart in this room today. And I ask you, God, to cause the Holy Spirit of heaven to convict every sinner, every lukewarm Christian, every doubter. 
I ask you to convict them by your spirit and cause them to turn to you in the name of Jesus.